Welcome back to the Amazon clone. In this video, we'll set up our products page and cart. So currently we've just got the server running here. We've got the Nest.js server running and we've got the React front end going. And we've also got the Mongo database going and that was running through the Docker container. So make sure all those are on. And you can see when you log in here, it just takes us to this home page. So we'll start off by just creating a header and we'll also have our cart and our products. So let's go ahead and start that and let's actually just get the data structure back that we need. So we can see here for this particular endpoint here, I've got three items here. We're an ID is a string. That's what MongoDB gives us. We've got the description price name, and then we've got this version here. So let's go ahead and open up our project. And we've got this source folder here. We've got these features here. And we can create a new feature. So let's go ahead and call this products, for example. So this will be where we have our product related things. And we can start off by creating some folders here. So we'll have some product specific components. We'll also have some product specific models. And we'll also have some product specific services or just one service. So let's just start off with the data layer. So let's just create a file here and we'll just call this product.ts. And if we open this up here and we'll just go ahead and, and I'll just get rid of this here. We'll export an interface here called product. And this is just going to be the name, which is a string. We're going to have a price, which is a number and a description, which is optional. And that's a string. Now MongoDB gives us back the ID and the version as well. So we want to work with both interfaces. So well, let's just call this one product document to mirror what it is called on the API. And we can just go ahead and extend the product interface that we've set up. And you can do underscore ID. Remember the underscore, that's what MongoDB generates for us. And then two underscores V, that's to do with the versioning. We won't be using it, but it will just give us the shape of the response back. So now that we've got our product interface set up, you can imagine what we want to make an API call and, um, you know, get the particular product. But I also want to deal with the cart. So the cart is just going to be, well, we'll export the interface for the cart. So the blueprint of the object. And cart item, it's going to extend or it extends that product document. And that's from the API. So let's try and get that in again. Let's get the second one this time. So I'm just pressing control space here and I'll get the one from the same directory from the models directory. And this is going to be the exact same thing. I'm just going to add a quantity here because each item you know, we want to add or subtract, a, you know, the, or specify the number of that particular item that we want to add to our cart. And finally, we'll have our cart here. So this is going to be the type cart. And that's going to be nothing more than just the array of cart items, which is just the products um, or an array of products with a quantity associated with it. So it's nice and simple to get started. So let's start by creating a, um, well, while we're in the spirit of the products, let's just go ahead and create a service here. And I'm just going to call this the product service.ts. So we'll just, I'll just type in NFN. I'm using the snippets so I can just press tab 
and that's an extension, the ES7, I believe it is, snippets. So let's just click that and click tab. There won't be any uh, arguments here because we're just going to get all of the products. And that's what we're going to show on our home page is just a list of all of the products. So basically what we want to do here is we just want to um, use Axios. So we have an async method here. So we can just go ahead and await Axios. And we can also go ahead and just auto import that. We'll have a get method here. And what we're getting back, recall, is the array of products or product documents to be more accurate. So let's just get the product documents here. And we can just go ahead and specify the type that we're getting. Now we're getting an array of those. So let's just say for our method here, well, we can just go ahead and use the back ticks here. And that will allow us to use the template literal uh, and access the variable. And recall that we've set up already in the previous videos, the react underscore app underscore base underscore API. So that we've already set up in the environment here. So you could just go there and copy that if you wish. Um, and then the endpoint that we're hitting that we've set up is just slash product. It's because the base has the API part in it. So it's nice and simple. And we can just go ahead and just return that response. And we could also just return in one go if we wanted. Um, so let's just go ahead and save that. Let's give us some nice formatting here. Now, I'm going to have a variable here. I'm just going to call it the product service. And this is just going to be an object with this method in here. I'm doing it like this in case we want to extend it um, and it'll keep it consistent with how we've set up the auth service. So then let's just go ahead and export this as a default um, export. So export that. And with that, we should be able to more or less make our API call. Um, but recall we're using um, Redux Toolkit. And we've got this slice here. So what we want to do is we want to mirror that in our products here. And we'll just put it in the root of the products folder. And we'll just go ahead and we'll just call this the product slice. .ts. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to um, have an interface here for the async state. Um, let me just open up this auth slice here. So I'm just going to copy this first part here. And I've got this to do to move this higher. So I won't have it there again, but that's just a mental note um, to move that interface higher here. So we've got this interface here. Now let's just go ahead and export something just for a second, just get rid of some errors there. Um, so we've got is loading and success is error. Again, we could refactor that higher, um, but just for simplicity, we'll just leave that there. So we can see everything all in the same file. Now, rather than auth state, uh, we're going to have the product state. And I should mention at this point, we're going to do both um, asynchronous and synchronous um, state. So the cart in itself and all that, that's going to be synchronous. Um, but the API calls and getting the products is going to be asynchronous. So that's why we're sort of separating it out here. Um, so the products, it's just going to be that product document type that we've created in the models folder. And it's going to be an array of those. And then the cart, it's just going to be the cart. 
So we have these both here, and we're going to go ahead and import that from the models as well. Um, because the products are just going to represent, you know, each of the products, and the cart is the selected products and the quantity associated with those selected products. So what we can do here, so we've got some initial state here. So is loading, is success, is error, they're all false by default. But what we can do is we can just set the products to an empty array. And likewise with cart, we can send that to an empty array. So what we want to do is we actually want to make use of this get products API core here. So let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and export this because we're going to use this. And we're going to go ahead and just call it get products. And for this, we're just going to create async dunk. So that should just import that. From there, I'll just separate the third party libraries from our application imports. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna call this uh, product here. And this is gonna be an async function here. And it's just going to be a try catch here. So I'll just use the, uh, that there. So basically if there's any error, what I'm going to do in this scenario is I'm just going to say what the error is. And you perhaps would want some better catching here. And we've actually seen that in the previous uh, video, but I am going to just disregard that. Um, so I really just want to get into some more interesting stuff here. So actually like building the cart and, you know, making the Stripe API call, which we'll do in the next uh, video for our payment gateway. Um, and then more of the repetitious stuff. But I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer. So the product service, we want to get that. And then we can just go ahead and we can just call that get products method. So we can see that that auto imported there for us. But we can actually just go ahead and just close this service up now. And we can also close these types up here. So that's that. Um, I suppose what we'd want to do next is we would want to have the actual slice itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to export the product slice. And for this, we're going to need to actually create a slice. I'm not sure. Okay. That did auto import for us. So that's nice. And We'll just give it the name, which is just, you know, product here. We'll just pass in the initial state, which is this here. Then we'll pass in our reducers. We'll come back to this, put our cart reducers here, one for incrementing the product, one for decrementing the product. And, um, and then we'll have some actual extra reducers as well. So that recall the extra reducers is for when you are dealing with a synchronous state. So it has this builder and that's just uh, not necessarily, that's just built in as a callback. Uh, so we don't have to pass it in directly. That's just going to be coming through the method that's on the extra reducers uh, option here in the create slice object. So in the configuration of this or in the functional body of this uh, we take the builder here and what we're going to do is we're just going to add the case here um, and then we're going to go ahead and call that api call so basically when we have a um an async thunk this is a wrapper around an API call. And based on that, we're able to have different states associated with the API call when it's called. So it's pending, filled, and rejected. And that gets added to that method there. Uh, so you can just go ahead and consume that, or we'll use that. And it has the state here. 
Now, the state is just going to be, it's relating to the initial state, um, but we, then we put the initial state into this slice, and then when we do things and manipulate the state, it will get back the latest state for us. So that's just how we can manage state globally. Um, and you've probably seen this in the previous videos, but just as a reminder. So basically when you make the request, we'll just go ahead and we'll just set the is loading state to true. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and shift alt down this here. And I'm going to get the fulfilled situation. And in this scenario, when you actually fulfill the request, what's happening is you actually get some data back. You get this payload back, which is an array of objects here. So if I just get that payload there, um, basically is loading. Well, it was loading, but now we've got the data. And so we can set the loading state back to false. We can set the is success state to true. And you can set the state dot products equal to the, um, sorry, this is the action and the payloads on the action object. And that may not give us back something. So we'll just have this or operator to get back an empty array if you know we get nothing back or something, you know, something else goes on here. But then we'll just add that add case here again. So I'll just go ahead and copy this one. I shall copy this one here down. And the idea is that, you know, we can add the is loading success into our component. So then when the data is loading, we can show a spinner and all those sorts of things if we were uh, so inclined to do so. So once again, the error state here, actually it's rejected, rejected. So let's say something went wrong. We won't have the action, but it's no longer loading. However, the is error is going to be true. And if you wanted, you could display a little toast or something like that um, if that occurs. And if that does occur, I'm just going to set the products back to an empty array. So that's pretty much that there. So now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll export that as a default um, export there. So I'll just take that product slice and then since we've used the Redux Toolkit methods, we can just go ahead and say we want to export the reducer there. So now that we have that, we can come to our store here and we can just go ahead and add something in here. So the product reducer is going to correspond to the product reducer. Now we didn't actually name it product reducer, but we just did an export default. So when we import it, we can just call it whatever we want. Um, so let me just shift alt down this. I'm not going to get the auto imports due to that. But if I get that in here, I can go ahead and click slash here, go into the products folder then go into the product slice. Yeah. Oh, wait. I don't know what happened there. Product slash product slice. Okay, now one extra thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to have this middleware uh, configuration here and this is um, similar to like the concept on node middleware where something happens in between, uh, you know, the reducer and the, um, the actions. So we can just go ahead and we can just say uh, get default middleware and this is again this is coming from the config store 
So we don't need to import that or anything like that. Um, it's just one of these callback um, params. And then we can just go ahead and we can just say get default middleware. So these are default middleware. And all I want to do here is I'm just going to set serializable check. And I'm going to set that to false. I'm just doing that so we don't run into any issues, get or we get any error messages or anything like that later on. Um, so let's, let's now work on the let's continue to work on our product slice. So we've set this up here and recall that we're setting the roots um we're exploring the root state and the app dispatch. And then we had another method that wrapped those uh, to get our particular types on for when we consume or dispatch something or uh, want to use a selector. So we did that in the previous videos. But let's come back to our product slice here. So another thing we might want to do here is we have our cart and our cart has a bunch of products in it. And it also has a quantity associated with it. So let's say we either want to add a product or remove a product, the quantity of a product. So let's say we want to buy a water bottle on Amazon, but then we want to order two or three. We need to be able to, you know, add one to the cart or we might want to subtract one from the cart. So we're going to need a method for this. And I'm just going to have a function here. And I'm just going to call it modify quantity by one. And I'm abstracting this function out from the uh, reducers. I will go into the reducers. But basically, it's all the same code to add or remove uh, one quantity. So you need to find it if it exists, uh, and then either add or subtract it. So just to avoid any duplicate code, I'm just going to uh, abstract that function out here. So what I'll do here is I'll just say I want a cart. So I need to be able to pass the cart in. And then I want to get the selected product because the user is going to select a product. And that's just going to be the, uh, the product document. And then I need some sort of modification type. So this is just nothing more than either adding or removing it. So I'm just going to go ahead and have the word increment or decrement and that's sort of to keep consistent with the counter sort of uh, thing they have there so what I'm going to do here is well let's see how this is going to look from the reducer point of view so in the reducer here we're going to have a method here called increment product and it takes the state of our application and it also takes the action, which is just going to be a payload action of the uh, type product document, I believe. And that just means, like you imagine if you're clicking on a particular product from the front end perspective on the products page, you click on a particular product we want to, well, firstly, we need to import the payload action from Redux Toolkit, but we want to pass in that there as an action. So basically what we can do here is we can just call a function and let's just say that the modified cart is equal to this function here, the modify quantity by one. Ah, where am I? Here. So then we can just pass in the state of the cart and the action payload, which is just the particular product document. And then I'm gonna have something here for increment here. And after I've got this here, what I'm able to do is I can set the state of the cart equal 
to the modified cart and we'll just get an error there because it's not actually um, created yet but let's go ahead and just copy this down for the decrement functionality and then this will just be DE so you can see that's the same code here. You could probably even abstract it further if you wanted to, um, but I'm happy with this here. And that means in our components, we'll be able to use those methods to set the state of our cart. So we have the increment product uh, core and the decrement product core. And this is coming from our product slice and it's coming from these particular actions that are in here. And because we've got this created slice method that's coming from Redux Toolkit, it gives us with it gives us the nice um, methods associated with that. And then we can just get the actions, which is able to um, get these methods out. And then we can use them in our components. So let's go ahead and just start to write this out the logic of it out for the modify quantity by one it's going to be fairly simple firstly what we'll do is we'll just take the previous cart which is we'll just do some array um we'll use the spread operator here just so we avoid um you know um modifying the original data of any sort even though we're in a function here just um we we'll also put this into a variable because we're going to use this a couple of times. Let's just get that going. And then we can see if we have a product in the cart. So what's happening here is we're clicking on a particular item. And if it's in a cart already, we want to add to the quantity. But if it isn't, we need to add the product to the cart. So if the product's in the cart, basically we can just loop through the previous cart and we can just find, um, basically what we're looking for is if a product in the cart and if it's um, ID or underscore ID, because we're using Mongo here, um, if that's equal to the selected product, ID that means we have a product in the cart already so that means what we'll do here is we'll just say let new cart equals to this and what we'll do is we'll just say if you know there's no product in the cart already so we're clicking on a new product for the first time what we'll do is we'll just say, um, we'll get the previous cart here. And since the product is not an item in there already, we'll just go ahead and we'll just push to that. Um, and then we can just go ahead and just get everything out of the um, selected product here. And we can also go ahead and we can just say we want the quantity to be one. So just to go through that, we're assuming that the user hasn't selected a particular product. They might have selected some product, but they haven't uh, selected this new product. So let's say there's a water bottle in the product card already, but then if they you know, click on something else like they want to buy a CD or something like that, or a book. They haven't clicked on that yet. So we didn't find that in the cart already. So what we do is we just pass in that selected product to the, um, to the cart and it's associated a new quantity, which is one. So And 
it's not going to be possible to um, if if there's you know I've got the um, disable button if it's um, zero in the cart. So. Yeah, so okay, that makes sense. Because if they if there's zero in the item and they decrement it, they won't be able to actually click the button in the first place. They have to be able to add it in the first place. So it does make sense to add this here. Um so of course you could put that logic in the function itself and prevent it from happening. Um but I'm satisfied with having the disabled on the event on the um button. To decrement it if there's nothing in there so either way that's just personal preference there previous card so all I've done here is I've taken the previous card if there's anything else in it that exists if that item doesn't already exist we're going to push it and then the new card we're returning is the previous card or the amended previous card I should say otherwise just get some logic here. Firstly, I think what we want to do is we just want to. Um, so this is the case that the product is in the cart. So what we'll do here is, since we have the, um, you know, the selected product, we can just go ahead and filter this out. So we can just say. We have the filtered cart here, which is just the previous cart. And then we call the filter method for the particular product. I'm using P here because I've used you know product up here. Not that it really matters, but um, just to show that this is something different. Um, or different. Well, it's the same thing, but um, just so we're not getting confused with the same variable names. So we get P, if the P ID is not equal to the product in cart ID. So the way the filter works is it returns everything that is, which this is true. So if I loop through all of the cart items here, if the ID is not equal to the ID um, that's in the uh, cart or the found one, uh, that means if it's not equal to that, we're going to keep it. So that's everything except for the one that we do have there, uh, which means it will just give back the previous cart except for that one particular value that we've clicked on here. We will add it back though, but we're going to add it back with a amended quantity. So, but firstly, we need to check what the modification type is. So we're either going to add one or minus one. So we get the modification type. And if that's equal to increment, we'll just go ahead and add one. So we'll just have one here. Otherwise, we're going to subtract one. So we'll have negative one here. And product in cart, the quantity of that is going to be equal to what it was plus the modification and I was struggling to come up with variable names here um, but I think this will do if you have better suggestions please leave them in the comment section below um, so yeah basically we're either going to add or subtract one it's not possible to subtract if they're at zero because we're going to disable that button i think we already have disabled it 
Oh no, we, we will disable it on our um, you know our product component. So let's say if the product in cart, if the quantity is equal to zero, what I'll do here is I'll just say, well, the new cart is just going to be equal to the filtered cart here. So why am I doing this? Well, you can imagine that if you add some items, you're adding the product into the cart, but if you subtract them back down to the zero mark, well, the product will still be in there with the quantity zero. So <clears throat> rather than return that particular product in the cart, I'm just gonna return the filtered cart. So otherwise, I'll take the new cart and then I'll also change the product in cart. And after all of that, we'll just go ahead and we'll just return the new cart here. And now you can see that we're no longer erroring here. So we've pretty much set up the product slice here and we've set up the um, other things. So we will just need to start to you know, create our front end about here. So I'm just gonna create a very, very simple header and it's just gonna have a log out button on it because I've got a log out button here. Put a, uh, I don't know if I have the Amazon logo in here or not. Um, I think I do, but I think I want a different color one here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just go into my documents here and I'm just going to get the Amazon clone and inside the front end I have the source because I did a practice video before this one. Um, so if I open up that, I can delete this logo here and I can just go ahead and I can copy and paste this logo in here. Oops, I closed the wrong thing there. So let me just open up my local host here. And because we've got the local storage and stuff like that, um, everything seems to be going all right. So I'm still logged in, um, but now I have the white text logo here. So what I'm going to do, let me just collapse things just so I can get my bearings back um, in the features here in the products here I got this components folder so we've got services and slice and models we're going to need to create a component here we'll call it the header component dot tsx rafce just to get the snippet there I'm just going to do Change that. Now, if I open up the uh, pages here, the home page here, um, rather than have any of this stuff here, I will. I don't think I need any of this stuff here. I might just copy it to the header though. Um, so we will use some of this stuff in the header. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to get rid of a few things and I'm going to get my header component. I'm gonna import that. So I'll save that. I'm gonna get rid of these things here. 
So I can come to my header component here. Now I'm just going to import these things here. Okay, so what have we got here? Header component. We will need the user. We will not need the JSON web token, but we'll need the user to display their name. Um, I'm going to import this here as well. So let me just separate the React import there. Um, now we won't log it out. We've got the dispatch method. We've got this here. Uh, let's just copy this down one. So I want to get the cart because I want to have the quantity there. So, you know, you can do it like that. And we've seen that in the previous video. Other way to do it is just to get the whole state to fight this out. And we can just get the product state. So, I guess what we want to do in here is we want to use a bit of state. So let's get that use state snippet there. And I'll just go ahead and import that. And I'm wanting to say that this is the cart count. And we can set the cart count. And initially this will be zero. So I think another thing we'll need here is we'll need the navigate function because we uh, may want to return home or something like that. So I'm just getting all the imports that we need here. So let's just go ahead and get the use navigate here as well so we can redirect them if we need to. Now, I think what we'll do here is we'll just say in this use effect here. So we've got this logout handler here that just dispatches the logout. Um, we'll use that in a moment. Uh, this use effect here, basically, if the cart changes at all, what we want to do is we want to display a different total quantity. So we'll get the total quantity here and we'll just take the cart and then we'll just call the reduce method. The reduce is a good way to, you know, reduce things down to a, a number. So an array of objects. So we have the accumulator and then we have the individual cart item and in each iteration, well, firstly, we start off at zero. The count's going to be zero by default. Now, what we can do here is we can get the accumulator here. And I can just tack on the item dot quantity here. So basically, you start at zero, you loop through the cart. So the cart is just an array of objects or an array of products. For each product in the array, what we want to do is we want to get the total number of the quantity. So it starts off, imagine there's only one product in the array. It starts off being zero, but then when we go to the first element in the array, we go zero plus the quantity. So let's say there's three items. There's three water bottles selected, for example. They'll add three there. And then this number will then become three. Let's say we had a second item, which was, you know, they want to buy a DVD. Then it passes that three in here. And then let's say they want to buy, you know, two DVDs. Takes that three plus the two quantity. So then we get a total quantity of five. Uh, so that's just a nice, concise way to reduce the number of the quantity in each of the product objects down to a single value, into our quantity value. And we'll go ahead and we'll display that on the UI. And what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and set that card count. 
to the um, total quantity. So nice and simple. Um, now we're going to actually make our header here. So I'm just going to import a couple of things here from Material UI. So what I'm going to import here is I want the app bar, I want the badge, I want a box, I want a button, and I want the toolbar. And these are going to come from that MUI slash material here. I'm just gonna duplicate that down. Um, I'm gonna get rid of all of the imports here. And then rather from material, um, I'm going to go icons dash material. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and just say, I wanna get the shopping cart outline, just so we have that. And I can just copy this in here. And I believe it's the icon there. So you just need to tack that on, I believe. Um, Oh, it's just erring because we haven't used it, although we haven't used these either. Uh, nevertheless, let's just build out the uh, the DOM. So what we've got here is we've got a box. So the box will just surround everything. Uh, let's just get rid of this here. Oh, let's just, just see this for a sec, actually. Um... I don't know why that's erring. But yeah, we've just got this high here. So let's just continue building this here. Now on the box, we just want to, we can style material UI elements with SX. That's just built in. Um, and then we just want to say flex grow is to one. So it takes the entire space there. Uh, so we want the nav bar to be spaced all the way from left to right at the top. Then we want to get the app bar here. And I'm just going to put the space here. Now we want this to be statically positioned. So it just remains there at the top. And I'm just going to add a little bit of styling here. So the background color. This will just be, now I just got this from amazon.com. I just went to the website, used the Chrome tools and shift alt I and hovered over the element. I should be pretty close to what it is. Um, I want the text to be white on that dark blue sort of color there. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of padding there, just four pixels of padding. Um, and then I want to actually have the toolbar. So this is going to um, also have a little bit of styling here. Let me just copy this here. Now, this will have different properties though. So I'm just going to have a display of flex and I'm gonna have the logo on the left and then some stuff on the right there. So I want to have my justify content as space between. And on the left there, I just want to have that image. And the image is just going to be slash Amazon logo dot PNG. And the alt, I can just have Amazon logo. Um, I will have a little bit of styling on here though, and I will have this on click here. Basically, if you're on a different page, although our authentication pages won't have these, but we'll have a cart page later on. And if you're on that, basically you can just say, we'll just navigate to slash here. And then we'll just go ahead and have a bit of styling here. Now I'm just going to make the width 
113 pixels. Now, very specific value. I just got that by looking at the website, basically. So you can just copy all these values in here. Um, padding top, I just put 10 pixels padding top there just to give it a bit more spacing there. And then I'll go ahead and make this cursor a pointer just so you know that you can click on it and navigate back there. Um, so that's that first section there. Second section will be the div on the right side since we're using space between. Um, now this itself will be a flex item. So that will allow the child elements to be in a nice row there rather than stacked uh, vertically one on top of each other. Um, so we can make that flex item by just doing this inline style here. We'll just say display flex. And you don't have to do inline styles. Um, you know, you can make classes if you, you know, want to do that. Um, again, I'm not really going to do that. So I'm just going to have a div here. And then I'm going to have another div here. And I'm just going to say hello. And this is where I can actually just get the user. And I can get their name if it exists. Um, and it should do by this point because they've actually logged in. Um, well, this is just for TypeScript purposes. Um, and then I'm going to have a button here. I'm going to say sign out. I'm just going to have a bit of styling here. By default, it's got some padding on it, but I don't actually want that padding there. So I'm just going to reset that to zero. And I'm just going to give it margin right of 16 pixels. That's a nice number. Uh, same as one rem if you're using the default. So it's you know, one unit of spacing. Um, now on click though, This is where I'll call the logout handler. So we can see this logout handler here. It's going to dispatch the logout method that we've set up in the previous videos. Uh, and I'll reset the user, then we won't be able to access the protected routes and it'll reroute us back to the sign in page. And then one more thing is rather than getting uh, the primary color, I'll just say that the color is inherit. Um, so we've got this sign out here, like button, uh, we've got this div closing here, and let's have another button. So we'll have a button, um, and basically when we, well this is where we're going to show our badge with our shopping cart outline icon, so let's uncomment that. And then we'll use that. So firstly, we need to have the badge here. And then we'll put this thing in here. Now the badge, it's going to have some badge content. And the badge content is just going to be equal to the cart count. And we want this to stand out, so we'll make this the primary color, which is that Amazon orange color. And we want this to be kind of big as well, so let's just say we want the font size here to be large. And then let's just add a span outside of the badge, so just next to it, just to say uh, cart here. Um, oh, this, the reason this is erring is because it's, um, coming from here directly. So it's not a default export. Oh, it's a default export. Um, and now we can see that we've got this nice Amazon logo here. 
If you click it, it'll go back to the home page, but we're already on the home page. It says, hello, Tess, which is the name of the guy we're using. Um, we have this cart here. We will make it so you can click on that and actually go to a cart page. Um, but before I do that, I just want to show this sign out here. So this signs out, takes you back here. If you come here, it will not let you go back in. So that works there. So let's type in the password here. Uh, close this. So perhaps what I'll do quickly is I will um, perhaps I'll navigate to the cart page from the header. So if they click on here, I'll navigate them to this page here called cart. So we need to create that page and I will create it in pages here. So I'll just get something quick going here just so we've got something uh, to look at. So we'll get the page. So inside this div, we'll just use that header component. Auto import it. Get rid of the React import and this little extra thing here. Now if we click on the app TSX, uh, wait, the index TSX, no, no, it is that TSX file. And we scroll up to the particular routes. We can see that we've got this private route here. We also want this to be a private route um, for the cart page. And it'll be slash cart. So we can save that. All right, so everything's looking good. I might just bring this import up. A sec, uh, like that, close that. So now if I'm over here, I can click on the cart page. The cart page is exactly the same at the moment. Um, and I can come back to the Amazon page here. So things are looking good. Um, what we'll need to do is we need to actually have a product. So let's display the product. We've done all the setup on the Redux toolkit side of things. So what we need to do is we need to be able to consume that. So let's return, let's just close a few things. Um, so <clears throat> on our home page here, what we can have. is we can just copy these things here. So we're gonna want these app selectors and the cart. So the home page and the product page are interchangeable. You could call it the product page if you want. Um, obviously I'm not gonna build the Amazon out in its entirety. I'm just gonna do the simple, you know, the login, registration, um, protected routes, Redux toolkit, um, and then the a bunch of products you can select and then the cart and also the finale which will be the next uh, video will be the actual um, payment gateway so what we got here is we've got this use dispatch method here um, we can get rid of this state here um, we'll just need to import these so just control spacebar for that now we can get the state from the product state and we can get the cart we can also get the products because we want to show all the products here um, but then if they click on any individual product um, basically we want to show that so actually what we should do before this uh, is actually create the product component so let's go here and we'll just create the product component. 
.tsx and I'm just going to press control left right back back big C okay don't need that so what we'll have here is let's just create an interface for our component so we'll just call it the product component props and that's just going to be the product really which is just going to pass in the product document type that we've created earlier and then we can just go ahead and we can say for this particular functional component uh, we can enforce the product components props on our um, params here or arguments and then I can just say I want to get the products here and that should be all good now I think I won't do local storage we've seen local storage for the um, the user so it's, it's more or less the same thing. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. If you want to add local storage to your products, to your cart, in a real app you would want it, um, but we've already seen how we can do that. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Um, so oh, this is just a singular product. Um, so that means I'm just going to manage the state within the uh, component here. So, um, in a sense there might be some duplicated counts but they should be in line because um, it's going to refresh on browser refresh here so ideally if you're doing this in a real project you just use local storage uh, but again we've seen how we can use that um, so I'm not going to you know, spend 10 minutes to set that up to, and repeat some of the stuff we've already learnt. Um, so we can go ahead and use app dispatch here. And we can just have this card here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and get all my imports that I need here. So we've got our React component import at the top. Um, then we'll have our third party imports here. So we'll have a card card actions, card content, card media, button, typography, from at MUI slash material. So What we're going, what we're building here is just one singular card, one product, which will have the ability to add or subtract, uh, or increment or decrement it, um, and then we'll display that corresponding in the header there. So, we'll come back to that home page there, and close that. Um, so, okay, let's just build out the card. So we've got this card here. Basically, we just want some fixed widths. So I might just have a width of, say, 300 pixels. And we'll also have a min width of 300 here. Uh, then we'll have a card media. And I'm just going to, we don't actually have images. So I'm just going to say, oh, um, this is an image component. We'll just give it a height, we'll just say 140. And the image itself, oh, you don't need this. 
the image. I'm just going to use a placeholder image here. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash buyer dot placeholder dot com slash 300 dot png slash 09f slash fff alt equals image and then I'm going to have some card content here I'll have my topography So I'll have the actual amount, which will be the product price. And I'm just going to have a gutter bottom here to give it the variant of a H5. And it will be a div component. And then I'll have another typography below this one, so I'll shift alt down that. I won't have a gutter bottom on this one. Um, but I will give it the variant of body 2. And this component here, we won't, we'll get rid of this one here. But then we'll have a color here. Of uh, text secondary, uh, text dot secondary, and I'm only going to show the. Oh well, firstly, I'm going to have a product description here, but I'm only going to show this if I actually have a product description. So I can just do this here. That's false. That will be the they'll short circuit and then this won't render. Um, so that's the card content there. Then let's have some card actions. So I'll just have a little bit of styling here, a bit of that SX stuff there, just to make it a flex box, just to line things up a little nicer. Um, and then I can just do some uh, space between. So justify content, space between. I'm going to go ahead and put a button or a MUI button here. Now, what I'll put in here is I'll just put a minus here. And I'm going to say, so this is the decrement button. It's going to be disabled if the count is equal to zero. So this count here, that's coming from the state. Um, if you click on it, what's going to happen is we'll just set the count to from the previous count and basically if the prev count equals zero return zero so that probably won't even happen but uh, just as a safety precaution there uh, so just make that a number I guess and then I'll just return the previous count minus one save that and then i actually need to dispatch an action so within this on click method here if i just go ahead and dispatch the decrement product so i need to get that in there and i'll just pass in the product uh, the product is passed in as well um, and while I'm here, I'll just get that increment function here. So 
So we've got this button here. I think we will want to just more or less copy that down. In between, we just want to show the count. We'll just have a span here with the count in it. And then we'll have pretty much the same thing. You won't need this though. Um, we can just set the count. So the previous count plus one. Uh, let's see. Does that need to be here? Okay, so we set the count, we add one, and then rather than decrement, we increment here. Oh, and I also want to make the size large. So that's pretty much it. It's just a simple card placeholder image, you know, the title description, and some buttons to increment the count, uh, which trigger the Redux toolkit um, reducers that we have there, our product reducer that we set up in the product slice. Um, so let's just go ahead and go to our home page here. So, We've got this header component here. We want to display the div. And basically what we want to have here is we just want to get all of the products. And well, only if the length is greater than zero. In that scenario, we want to map through. And for each product, what we'll do is we'll just return that product component. And we can just go ahead and we can just pass in as a key here the uh, product ID. And then it's going to need the actual product itself. So we can just go ahead and pass in that product there. We can save that. Um, they'll put all the products next to each other. So let's go here and then let's just add an inline style here. Um, so we have just display this as flex and what that will allow us to do is add the flex wrap property. So things wrap nicely. And then we can add this gap here. Let's just say we want a gap of 48 pixels. And since it's flex, we can center things so let's center things horizontally or along the main axis, which in this case is the row. Um, and then also in the Y axis or the uh, short axis or the non-main axis or the secondary axis, we can say align items. Um, and we can center that vertically. Um, not that it's a big deal for us. Actually, we might not even need that. Um, but let's just add a little bit of margin top. 48 pixels there. All right. Now let's see how far we've gotten. Well, we haven't gotten very far at all. Um, why is that? Okay, okay, I think we need to actually, uh, what do we need to do here? We need to get the products. Because we don't have the products.
because our default state for the products is an empty array. So if I get this use effect in here, and I use the use effect snippet, when this page or this component loads, I'll go ahead and dispatch. And I might bring this up before the use effect. So I'm able to dispatch the get products method. Um, yeah, that's it, I think. All right, nice. So you can see that we've got our products here. Um, and we can see that we've got this wrapping here. So that's nice. Um, let's say I... Oh, I don't have my buttons. Oh, I think I just need to add a... Dispatch, dispatch. I need to add a plus here. Get rid of this disabled here. All right, so I can't click the minus button, which is what I want, but I can add this. You can see that it's actually put the number up in the cart there. And I can add some of these, add some of these, I can minus some of these. And yeah, so that's what I wanted to set up in this video. Um, admittedly, I could do some slightly better styling here. Um, but I think in the next video, I really want to actually build out the cart page, which I think it's going to be a similar thing to this component here, except it's going to be more, you know, it's going to be a horizontal and take the full width up, but that's just a quick component to build up. The actual functionality is going to be the same. So it does illustrate how we can have that global state. Um, so we did the Redux toolkit, um, async dunk or the asynchronous to get the state. And then we've also done it um, within our app. One thing to note is we don't have it with local storage. In a real app, you probably would want the local storage. But you can see that this value here is coming from local storage. Um, so if you want to have that persistent state, uh, I would encourage you to go to um, set that up. And we've done it for the JWT and the user. So if you just copy the same steps, you'd be able to get it going for the card if that's what you want to do. Um, but what I want to do uh, in the next video is I want to come to the finale and actually build out the Stripe payment gateway. So, you know, I might touch up a little bit of this styling here and have that cart page in here. But the main thing is we'll actually... Um, have that payment gateway there so i'm really looking forward to that video thanks so much for watching this video please subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll see you in the next one cheers